Rubik Wild said in a recent comment that it's the magic around Zettelkasten that's redundant and the reason that people often ignore it. Let's have a think about that. Ultimately, a Zettelkasten is not magic. It's just very well connected notes using a specific system for those connections. That emergent feature, those connections of the note taking is what really it manifests as magical. When Nicholas Luhmann died, he had over 90,000 notes in his Zettelkasten, all interconnected. Truly more complex, I think, than a human brain. Prior to using this method myself, I had gigabytes of notes that were a nice archive, which I still reference frequently, but just not as useful for thinking, for writing, for making videos. The production of a vast array of possibilities is an emergent property of a Zettelkasten. Again, thank you, Rubik, for the comment. It inspired me to make this video. And we're going to create an entire permanent note from scratch, integrate it into our Zettelkasten, and do some discourse graph analysis to dig in and think. We're going to start out by creating our fleeting notes. These will be the same notes that we used from the introduction. For now, we're just going to paste them in. We've pasted in our fleeting notes, and now I'd like to go back and start to get some reference notes. I'm using the tool Read from Readwise in order to be my source material for reference notes. What you see now is just a sped up version of me going through my reference materials, collecting reference notes, putting them into the Zettelkast in, in the correct field. Now we're gonna take our first shot at creating a draft permanent note. And this part is, I guess, trial and error. You know, you don't worry about writing the perfect note to start. It's a process that builds up from all the information you've already collected and the thinking that you do. At this point, we're going to add our first index term, trying to give this note kind of a name, a door, a portal, something that will uh, entice us to enter into this line of thinking and, really importantly, the term that will be used to interconnect it with other notes later. Something I noticed as I was creating that index term was I used one that I already had as a term in my system. And then I explored that further, going into the Zettelkast and connect on note. That gave me an idea to improve the index term for this new note. Now we're going to turn the Zettelkast connections index term into an inline node. This is the exciting part. It's time to add our first relevant note. We're going to connect this new note to a note that already exists in our Zettelkasten. This is the magic. Uh, sorry, Rubik, but this is the magic. It's when you start creating these connections that everything begins to come together and the beautiful complexity emerges. Now, right here, we're going to do a quick jump back. After doing this work, connecting the notes, reading reference notes, thinking about my fleeting notes, I've decided to make some additions to the actual perm note itself. Remember, this is a process of building a note. It takes a little bit of time. It's thinking. It's a little bit of work, uh, but it's not, um, it's not onerous. It's, it's actually really quite fun. Now, as I was going back and doing that, I realized, oh, I can do a better index term. So I've gone here and I've deleted uh, the original index term. No harm, no foul. We can do it again. And I've changed it. Now, here's me with my actual human brain, remembering a note that already exists in my Zettelkasten that I'd like to connect this new note to called Zettelkasten Brain. Now this new permanent note is connected to two existing permanent notes in the Zettelkasten.
And here we go again. Uh, another note has gotten my attention, so I'm going to connect or backlink this new permanent note to Zettelkast and Dialog. Now I'm going to do something interesting. I'm going to take a quick little segue into that new note that I backlinked, Zettelkast and Dialog, to see what's going on there, just to read, to tickle my own human brain a little bit about some of the things I was writing before. This is all part of the process. This is the fun part. We're going to take a quick segue here because I want to go back and add some of my sources. Now what you're seeing me do here is a side thing. I made an improvement to my Zettelkasten schema by changing from sources to relevant sources. I really like that. It fits better. I just upgraded my Zettelkasten and now I'm going to go ahead and start to use this field in this new way. This is kind of a bonus. It wasn't necessary to create the note. But oftentimes, while I'm making notes and thinking about how I actually use my Zettelkasten and how my Zettelkasten works, especially with the discourse infusion, this type of thing will happen and I'll have an improvement I want to make. I'll often just do that right on the spot. I'm trying to do a better job of capturing those on video. Now here you can see that improved relevant source schema and I'm beginning to go and put in some citations. So I've got my original URLs and I use a tool. I've been using this site, mybib.com, to create my AMA citations. That's just what I decided to use. I may change that later. I don't know. But I did want to embed that directly into the Zettelkast and in the relevant sources. So I had some uh, easy way in the future when I'm writing or making videos to do my references. <laughs> And since my Zettelkasten is always evolving, here's another little change I decided to make, changing it from related terms to relevant terms. I hope you don't mind these little segues, but hey, you know, this happens on the fly, so I thought I would share that as well. We're starting to have a really nice note here, really deep connections into the previous Zettelkasten. It's time to do a little bit more work and start to extract some claims from all the information we've gathered, the notes we've created, and that's what I'm going to do here. So I've copied in the first claim, feature that prevents notes from becoming a pile of useless data. Now we tag that as a claim, and that's going to come with some extra schema. When I say schema, I'm talking about fields associated with the super tag, in this case, the super tag claim. So whenever I make a claim, I want to be able to have supporting and refuting evidence. So you can see here, one of my relevant sources is in fact supporting evidence for this claim about backlinking in a Zettelkasten. Now it's time for us to create some relevant terms. We create the term and then we tag it. I'm extracting these terms from the note itself. Any important small phrase, usually just one or two words, I'll take that, turn it into a term, and tag it as a term. All of these aggregate under the term super tag over time. They become the equivalent of the index in Lumen Zettelkasten and have many uses. I usually add as many of these as I can. There's no reason not to do them, and they create a really useful list of important terms over time in your Zettelkasten. Here's a quick example of extracting the word complexity, making it a term, and adding it in. Now terms all have their own schema. Here I'll show you how to add a definition. I'm using Wikipedia just to fill in the definition for backlink. And we'll put that here in the term schema for the term backlink. And then we will also be able to see that there is no permanent note uh, for the term backlink yet. That's an opportunity in the future to extend our Zettelkasten forward in time, which is a really neat thing. I always record the source of any definitions, and it's really nice to look and see if there are any relevant or permanent notes associated with the term. So let's take a pause and let's create some literature notes. All that means is we're going to think about what we've done here today in the creation of this note, and we're going to 
talk about that in our own words relative to any reference notes. So I'm going to think about my reference notes and I'm going to write literature notes in my own words. You'll see the little uh, helper text that I have there underneath the word literature notes to help me do that. So this next little bit is just me looking at my reference notes and expressing myself. Uh, what it says to me, what I think about it, what it makes me think might come next. It really could be anything. And this is one of the things that will tend to then segue to the creation of relevant questions. So but now we've created a nice set of literature notes that I think will be useful as we encounter this note in the future. And right now, we'll jump over and we'll start to do some relevant questions. Along the way, I began to think of these as hypernotes, which was not a term that I had encountered before. And so I decided to turn this into a relevant question. Is anyone using the term hypernotes? And let's not forget that we need to use our index term as the leading part of our permanent note. I like to put this index term there because it acts as a portal for traversing all of your permanent notes at any time. And then, of course, I went and I started looking around a little bit. So you'll see that I tagged that as a question, and then I put hypernotes in the terms. So now I have a new term in my database, and I have a new question in my database. This came from my thinking during the literature notes. I dropped out to u.com and I started to search for hypernotes and that led me to a number of sources and you can see here where I've got a definition of hypernotes coming out on the right from another AI, believe it or not, but that's a conversation for another day. And then I found a former company that was doing something called hypernotes. But it doesn't look like there's been much activity lately, so I'll probably pick this up at another time if I want to. I actually went back and I checked all the DNS uh, to see who owned the domain Hypernotes, and I found that there was a guy named Diego that did, so I'm going to add that here to my reference notes. So in the future, if I ever want to take this newly indexed term, Hypernotes, and source it back and even try to reach out and contact Diego, I have a little bit of information. But as you can see, that was 1996, so I'm not sure Diego's actively working on this and it might not really matter very much. But hey, at least I have all the links, the sources, the references, everything is still here. I also decided to go ahead and define the term hypernotes. So I jump over to that term, hypernotes, and I will add a definition. Remember, hypernotes as a term are our index terms. Our index terms and terms are the same thing. And this gives us tremendous flexibility for the utilization of these over time. At this point, I'd like to point out you're actually seeing me do research in real time using my Zettelkasten with my discourse model injection into the Zettelkasten model. 
All right, we did it. We have a new note. It's called Hypernotes. It is back connected to three existing relevant notes. It is defined. We have relevant notes. We have reference notes. We have literature notes. We have fleeting notes. This is what a fully developed Zettelkasta note with the discourse module injection looks like in my Zettelkasten in Tana. It is extremely powerful. It's been life-changing. I really hope this video has helped shed some light on how it works. Thank you.